the governor-elect of Edo State, Senator Mondo Kwebolo, as he has been inaugurated as governor tomorrow, 12th of November. And of course, we look at this as a vista for progress in Edo State. And joining me to X-ray the prospects, the progress that we expect in the incoming government is the former commissioner for works in Edo State, and of course, uh, an APC chieftain, and a person of architect Frank Ewoma is joining me via Zoom. Good morning, Frank. Good morning. How are you today? I'm great. And you? Uh, well, thank God for life. All right. First of all, I must say congratulations once again. Your party's candidate uh, emerged as the uh, governor-elect. And of course, now it's not just the governor-elect uh, uh, emanating from your party, but for the entire Edo state. And as he hits the ground tomorrow, after being inaugurated as governor, uh, the big task is upon him, you know, to bring everything to shape for the betterment of the entire Edo people. So let's take your perspective on your thoughts on this great victory for the people of Edo state. First of all, we have to thank God. Uh, it was a hard-fought election. Um, unfortunately, maybe a bit divisive, but at the end of the day, it was peaceful. Um, and the, the people freely made their choice. Uh, so we have to thank God. And of course, we have to thank the Edo people, the Edo voter, who once again showed that um, they are quite enlightened and quite um, aware of the situation um, in the state. And so they, they, they made their choice. They, made, they showed their preference at the polls. And for this, uh, the party is quite um, grateful. Of course, um, our, um, the party's, um, well, now our governorship elect, I think it's a lot easier for me to say our governor or governor elect uh, has been uh, tasked with the job of moving Edo State um, forward and, you know, on the path of development. And um, I, we believe in our party that it has every single capacity, capability to deliver on its electoral um, promises. And so we can only ask that every Edo person, irrespective of whoever you voted for, to join hands with our governor-elect as he becomes governor tomorrow. And uh, we begin to, uh, uh, to kickstart, to restart the journey of um, developing Edo that we all can uh, truly be proud of, that uh, we all will participate in as citizens and as a do people in an atmosphere of peace, without acrimony, without undue politicking, and without undue fighting. So the, the future looks very bright for, for the do people, yes. Thank you very much, Architect Frank. Uh, but let's look at the challenges that you see that he may be faced with as he assumes his roles as the governor tomorrow. What do you see as the challenges and how do you see him, you know, prioritizing uh, his plans in order to bring smiles, you know, to the people of Edo State? Yeah, the, the, the major challenge would be that in the last um, eight years, Edo has not really witnessed participatory uh, democracy. And so our people may be a little uh, less trusting of government and government policies. So the, our governor-elect will have to take critical steps, fast steps, vigorous steps to bring back the trust and the connection between the government and the people so that we really get the kind of development we want, not what some people think it should be. Um, I mean, if you take a look at Benin City today, um, the roads are really bad. Thank God it's not raining right now. I do state generally the roads are in very poor shape. Um, the schools are in extremely poor shape. Um, there's almost no functional government hospital. I mean, so there's a lot of work for the governor elect to do, a lot of work for him to do. And um, I believe he has the capacity to do it. Um, he will have to take this in, in a, in a in small bites, if you just attack everything at once, it, it might be too much. So perhaps you will just take one or two sectors and um, and uh, begin to, to, to change things around. 
I mean, outside of Benin City, many parts of the state have not witnessed any government, uh, any government presence, any government action. And so it's also important that he begins to integrate all the state together so we move together as one. Um, this is not the time for us to start talking about tribe, to start talking about region, ethnicity. No, we are all at those. We all come from the same source and we all must put hands together to work for the betterment of the state. Okay. Uh, much has been spoken of as regards rewarding cronies. Uh, you agree with me that uh, a lot of persons we are around him to make sure that he's able to get his victory uh, for the party and, of course, for the entire people of the state. Uh, what do you see as ways in which he can reward those who uh, have been around him, working for him to make sure that he is able to grip this victory? Do you have a perspective or do you have something in mind on how he can reward those cronies? Well, I think it's a bit disrespectful to refer to party members and citizens, bona fide citizens of this state as cronies. We are not cronies. We are yeah. development partners. We are uh, partners in, in the same idea of how the state should move forward. And so um, it, the question of rewarding cronies shouldn't arise at all. I, I don't think the governor has any obligations to reward any kind of crony. Um, we, I don't think he, should, he even participates in cronyism. So let us move away from such um, talk as if, uh, cronies or not. But again, it is important that in developing the state, the governor uh, must do it in a participatory way. Um, going to bring businesses from outside the state to do jobs that um, do people can do, for me, is very bad, very poor politicking. That's what we have experienced in the last eight years. Giving a professional in a do state um, job to do and ensuring that they do it and they do it well is not cronyism. It is called participatory development. All over the world, government sets down um, parameters from which its citizens can benefit. So there's absolutely nothing wrong in the government having, uh, employing a dope people, employing and engaging a dope businesses, using a dope consultant to develop a dope state. That is not cronyism. That is participatory um, uh, development, participatory democracy. And um, so I, I will expect that the government um, uh, completely discontinues the what we used to have in the past, where even uh, food for public events was brought in from outside the state. So it is not cronyism, please. Uh, it is participatory democracy. And the governor has um, pledged to give us um, this participatory democracy, allowing Edo people to participate in the development of Edo state. And uh, we all should stand behind him and give him the necessary support to ensure he delivers on his electoral promises. Thank you very much, uh, Architect Frank, for your articulation and for putting a better perspective to it as regards rewarding those who uh, we have been participatory in uh, his emergence. Okay, but let's look at the aspect of uh, what legacies that he must have, that the outgoing government under Godinogas or Baseki, you know, is bequitting to the state, to the incoming. Uh, what do you see uh, among these legacies that he should prioritize to continuing governance? It's always a continuum. Uh, and uh, there's a saying, the popular saying I like to quote, and that says that legacies are built on kindness. Legacies are built with human relationship. Uh, look, the best legacy a man can bequest is a feeling of inclusion, it's a feeling of being part of a big thing, being part of a big event. Developing Edo State is not a one-man show. Um, definitely, for me, it is not a good legacy if um, in the process of claiming to develop Edo State, the people are alienated, the traditional institutions are attacked. That, that, those, those are not legacies. Those are not legacies that we, we want. Um, hospitals are brought down and the museums being built. For God's sake, museum is for keeping dead things. Hospital is for keeping living things alive. So for me, the, the governor should just uh, focus on his own ideas. It's not a question of trying to copy 
what Obaseki do or did or did not do. No, 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 no. He has his own ideas of how to develop a new state. And he should just focus on it. We need good schools. Um, not, not schools on PowerPoints, not schools that are celebrated in Rwanda and London, but not celebrated in Edo. We want the schools that our children can touch and go into and be taught. We need teachers in our schools. We need um, hospitals for our, our people. We need roads for our people to move in. We need farms that actually produce food stuff. So those are the kind of developments we want. It, it, for me, it shouldn't be chasing uh, any kind of uh, whatever the past administration did. Government is a continuum. Whatever the past administration did that is working well for the people, of course, that should be kept. But uh, whichever ideas were brought by the previous administration, that doesn't serve the people well in the governor's opinion. I think it is well within his rights and well within the expectations of the people for him to reverse those policies and make them so that our people actually have a state that uh, they can be part of and can be proud of. Yeah, you spoke about inclusion, but I don't know what's on your mind when you said that. But uh, something just got my mind agitated, most especially uh, as regards uh, what governors are expected to do as they are inaugurated into office in terms of carrying party leaders are, are along, you know, in terms of feeding the appetite of party leaders, in terms of making sure that, you know, they also benefit and they are given a large, you know, attention in governance. Uh, do you see the possibility of getting things done for the state if the governor elect that is being inaugurated into office as governor tomorrow, Monday Okbalo, you know, focuses on the leaders of the party or finding a way to feed the appetite of the party at the expense of the common patrimony of the people. Do you see that as what we augur well for the people of Edo State? Well, I think there's a distinction between the party and government. Um, Comrade Adams, when I served in his cabinet, used to tell us uh, something. And that, look, uh, what you need to win an election is quite different from what you need to run a government. Um, is a governor, uh, by the grace of God, touch wood, starting from tomorrow, of a do state. I'm talking of Senator Monday Bewolo. He's a governor of a do state. He's not the governor of APC or any other grouping. He's a governor of the state. So he, he, his focus is going to be on the state. That does not mean that he's, a, he's not a party member. It doesn't mean that he's not a Christian. It doesn't mean that he's not a father. But he's now the governor, the father, the pastor, the whatever of the entire state. So... I, I, I see nothing to fear, really. I absolutely see nothing to fear. I, I, I do not think there's anything that stops him from uh, developing the state while at the same time benefiting his party members, benefiting his non-party members, party members of other parties, benefiting people from other religions, in fact, benefiting every resident and citizen of the state. If we develop the state, the way the state should be developed. It has nothing to do whether you're a party man or you're not a party man. Do we use parties to go to card, uh, to go to market, party cars to go? We don't use party cars to go to the market. We don't use party cars to drive on the road. We don't use party cars to go to, to hospitals and so on and so forth. What we need is governance. And in the presence, in the in the in the in the process of uh, delivering on the, his mandate every citizen, every resident of the state will develop. So let's not focus on whether it's a party elders or party. Is there any political party that doesn't have elders and leaders? The so-called elders and leaders are also citizens. So they will benefit when the roads are good. They will benefit when the schools are good. They will benefit when there's peace and tranquility in the state. So I, I do not see, have any fears, and I, I do people should not entertain any fears that um, Senator Monday is going to be only developing his party and leaders and members and so on and so forth. No, it's not even possible. I mean, are you going to build a road and say only APC people can pass through it? So it's not even possible. He's going to face using our common patrimony, as you correctly put it, to develop the state. 
and every citizen, every resident, irrespective of political affiliation, religious belief, whatever, will benefit from it. That is my take on uh, what's going to happen. Uh, the, the party APC stands for progressive ideas, the, um, developing society and enriching democracy. These are concepts that um, benefit everybody irrespective of their beliefs. Perception about uh, how he should treat perceived godfathers uh, that would want to make him, you know, influence him to take some certain decisions and policies that may be detrimental to the people of the state. Let me be very clear on this. Dobno Peolo is a self-made man. And when you talk of godfathers, it's as if he's tied to somebody's apron strings. I do not think or believe there's anybody today in the state that can claim to be holding or that can claim that Governor Pebolo is uh, attached to his apron strings. He's not attached to anybody's apron strings. He's a man with a vision for the state. He came out from a very successful career in the private sector to contribute to the development of the state. So any decision he makes is going to be for the best and betterment of the state. Uh, for, for the betterment of the state. Um, I think this entire concept of godfatherism has been blown out of concept, uh, blown out of proportion, particularly by the previous administration, who used it as an excuse to disenfranchise the two people. Uh, in, in, in the guise of, oh, um, I don't want to 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 control to godfathers, I don't want to be influenced by godfathers. All the previous administration did was to engage the people of the state in a war of attrition. I mean, we became almost like, um, um, we, we became like enemies of our own state in our own state. So for me, this whole idea of godfathers, cronies and all that, it's completely and totally blown out of proportion. What is available that I am aware of is that we have party members, non-party members, citizens of the state, and we all want development of the state. And if the governor, does the simple things that we believe he will do, repairs our roads, repairs our schools, bring back our hospital, um, ensure that our farms actually produce now. We do no longer want uh, PowerPoint farms. Let us be sure. I mean, if, 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 if you are developing a state and you are bringing a project to the state, we don't want to wake up tomorrow and hear that that project now belongs to somebody else. And, and then you see it's because you don't want to go further. You don't want to go further and all of a sudden uh, a hospital that started as a public hospital becomes a private museum. You don't want godfathers and all of a sudden a hotel bought with government money is suddenly a private enterprise. So so please, let us just move away from the past. That past is gone and done. This idea of not um, engaging with our people one-on-one -on -one under the guise of fighting godfatherism, uh, it, it, it's shown itself in, in its true colors to be uh, a smoke scream and um, engage with our people. There is nothing wrong with the government of the day engaging with and engaging our people for the development of the state. It is not serving godfather, it is not serving cronies. If you, uh, as you are in the studio, are the best media uh, presenter in Edo State, what is wrong with employing you to work for Edo State government? Would that be, will you not, can you not be accused of being a godfather because uh, you, you, are, you are the best in what you do? Edo State is for Edo people. Edo development should be done by Edo people. We don't like this idea of exporting Edo jobs out, of exporting Edo projects out, of disappearing Edo assets under the guise that you are fighting godfathers. Our governor is not going to fight anybody. He's coming here to work for the people of the state. We should all gather together to help him deliver. Thank you. Okay, thank you. One last question before we call it a wrap on this segment, uh, Architect Frank. Uh, do you believe that he's going to be having trust issues, most especially as issues and arguments surrounding how he was <clears throat> thrown up uh, by the election that took place September 21, and of course uh, being announced by uh, INEC? on his victory, uh, you agree with me that as we speak, uh, so I'm already heading to court over these issues. Now, do you see that this could be a clog in the wheel of progress for him? And how can he build trust and make the people believe in his policies and programs? 
Trust with who? Trust issues with who? He doesn't have trust issues with me. I'm a registered voter and I voted. He doesn't have trust issues with the people who voted for him. If some people who lost the elections uh, decide to challenge the elections in court, how does that translate to a trust issue with the people of Edo State? They are the ones who have a trust issue with themselves. After all, when they won elections, did they have trust issues with the Edo people? There's nothing like that. Even in America, the president, the current uh, president elect, when he lost the last election, he challenged the decision of his electoral body. It's part of the process. So if anybody has any grievances about the elections, they should go to court and they are already in court. That does not translate to a trust issue. It is part of the process. It is defined in the process of electionary. In any contest, you will have a winner and a loser. So that does not, for me, it doesn't present any kind of trust issues. The people of Edo who willingly came out, it was peaceful. Was the election not peaceful? Was there a report of any fights anywhere? Did we hear of any violence? No, that somebody lost an election does not suddenly invalidate that election. Particularly when the same person had won, uh, well, um, the proxy of the same person had won elections previously. So Edo people has a right to make their choice. If a government comes in and doesn't quite deliver what the people want, they have a right to vote for somebody else. And that's what happened in September on September 24th. So there is absolutely no trust issues. The, the governor-elect is coming in. He's going to have the complete trust of the people. And even those who were voted against or who worked against him, some of them are already retracing their steps and beginning to see reason that, oh, we, may have, we might have made a mistake. But for me, all that is past now. He's not a governor of the political parties, he's the governor of the state. He's been elected by the people to come and work for the state. So for me, there is absolutely no trust issues. Look at the look at the statistics of the elections in 2020 and the statistics of the elections today. The margin is more or less in the same region. If there was no trust issues with the previous election, why would there be trust issues now? So please let us not be swayed by those who want to sow all discord or doubts right. in the minds of our people. They've lost the elections. We all need to move on and develop our states. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Architect Frank Ewaman. And uh, Architect Frank Ewaman is an EPC chieftain and former commissioner uh, for works in Edo State. And we hope uh, you oblige us in subsequent meetings. And Architect Frank. Absolutely. Anytime you call on me, I'm, I'm delighted. I'll be delighted to share my views. Thank you Thank very you. much for giving me the platform. Thank you. Thank you. The conversation continues as we have in the studio, uh, starting from my extreme left, uh, a policy analyst, a barrister at law, Sonny Daudu. Thanks for coming, Sonny. Thank you very much. And next to Sonny Daudu is a civil society activist, and he is St. Moses Iromoseli. Thanks for being here. Thank you. All right, well, let's look at the new chapter, a vista for, the mo for progress in Edo State, and uh, it's a new dawn. I uh, want to have your thoughts on that, uh, Barista Sonny. Uh, we have a new governor-elect that will be sworn in tomorrow, November 12, and that will be uh, an end of the uh, administration of Godino Agasa Obaseki and a new chapter for uh, Senator Mondo Pueblo as governor. What do you see as hopes for the people of Edo State? Well, well, thank you very much. First, I want to establish that uh, Senator Monde Okwewelu is a student of mentorship who have learned the ropes of management of both humor and resources of the state over the years. So it's not a neophyte in the government of Edo. So Edo should expect a government that will be inclusive a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. So it's a government that we believe will be premised on development, a government that will prioritize sustainable environmental development for the people of the state. It is a government that comes in with a mere of political reawakening. So to us, it is gladdening to know okay. that the governor-elect is a person who has all it takes to harmonize both the diverse nature of the state for its progress. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, that's just a tip of the iceberg.